everyone the three questions with jordan anderson there you go i'm to have jordan on I'm actually really excited that uh, Jordan Anderson here. Jordan is the Director of Learning Services for Barrington 220, which I'll actually be joining uh, in June uh, coming up. And I'm really excited not only because like I wanted to talk to you, but I wasn't sure you're gonna show up because in the middle of the night, <laughs> my calendar <laughs> request, I got a maybe I'm showing up. I'm like, are we uh, doing it? Like you didn't say no, hey, something came up. And so I was like, hey, are we doing this? You're like, I have no idea why it's said maybe. Like what happened? I know. But it's <laughs> it's horrible that that happened. And and like I said, the only thing I can contribute that to is a, a late night walk with my dog and using the flashlight on the app. And it must have opened up my calendar and hit maybe. So I apologize <laughs> I thought, for that, but I'm a solid yes for you. <laughs> right. It was very, I thought I was like, that was passive aggressive. Maybe like, I'll come. You'll see. So yeah. I thought I thought why I was like, what's what's going on here? I've never got like a, a, a maybe last minute, but here we go. So yeah, and I know I'm just teasing you, Jordan. So uh, Jordan, I I'm really pumped to to join you, and uh, we you just told me like kind of your goal for the day and what you're trying to achieve, and I was like, oh, <laughs> I wish I recorded that. So we're gonna try to <laughs> capture that, uh, you know, in the second podcast. But uh, I always love to kind of hear about like the inspiration that you had. Uh, from the teachers and the administrators and, you know, some of the stuff that you've learned over your career. So if you look back at your own education, you know, your experience, you know, as a student, maybe even as a, you know, educator, who's a teacher that inspired you and why? So this is such an easy answer for me. I love when people ask me this question. So my absolute inspiration. And honestly, the reason why I am in the position I am today goes all the way back to my second grade year. Uh, in second grade, I had an amazing teacher. Uh, her name is Mrs. Sherman. Uh, she's now Mrs. Krell, Linda Krell. Uh, she was my teacher in McHenry School District 15. I actually still live in McHenry, even though I work in Barrington and, and do stay in touch with her, uh, you know, through social media. But she was just an absolute gem of a teacher. And as a very young student, I was uh, somebody who was a little anxious at school. Uh, my first grade year was very, very difficult. Uh, I I longed to be you know home with my mom and and loved the safety of home. And school was just a little bit challenging. And my first grade year was, uh, you know, met with a lot of resistance a little bit from the teacher. And I can remember that vividly, even as a mm. six-year-old, uh, just that there were uh, some other students who struggled and uh, I kind of took some of the projection of what my first grade teacher would say personally, even if it wasn't directed to me. Mm. Mm. And that caused me to be just a very, very anxious student. And the second I walked through the door in second grade, it that all went away. It all disappeared. And I learned very quickly as a seven-year-old girl how important it was to have an adult who was calm and accepting and really believed that we all had different talents and different uh, different things to contribute. And she loved every single one of us for who we were. She did not expect us to be something that we weren't. And she really did tap into uh, our own individual passions. Hmm. And I, I feel like I almost remember every single day of my second grade year. And I went home that year. I told my parents, I'm going to be a teacher. I want to be just like Mrs. Sherman. I want students to feel good. Like I feel good when I'm with her. And they'll tell you to this day that she's the reason I went into education and, uh, really, you know, still a huge reason as to why I pursued administration as well, because it was important to me to really work closely with other educators uh, and, and try to ensure that that impact is still being made on kids. All right. Is Mrs. Krell now? Is it Mrs. Krell? Yes, Mrs. Krell. All right, Mrs. Krell. I don't know if you're in McHenry, so I was actually in McHenry, so I, I know the area very, very well. Uh, yes. you know, so I'm listening to you and, uh, and, uh, it is so apparent, and I think this is so important for anyone listening to this podcast, that so much of what happens in our childhood, like sticks with us and shapes us. And, you know, there is really good moments in my childhood that I hate and or that, you know, look back fondly on and there's there's moments I hated that um, 
and it, it, you know, we kind of just are a little bit dismissive. And so I look, like, this is something that I really believe in that basically anything you say, uh, you know, to a kid could stick with them until the day they die. And so we, we have to be always thoughtful of that because you can see the impact it's had on you. So that was, that was very powerful. I'm glad, I'm glad, um, you, you shared that. And so you, you kind of mentioned that you wanted to make that impact as an administrator, you know, making sure that, you know, the people you work with. So when you think about like a great administrator, you know, whether it was as a kid, whether it was, you know, a colleague, who's somebody you think of and why? So this one was a little bit harder only because I've, I have worked with and currently work with the most amazing uh, school administrators and district level administrators. But uh, the first one that comes to mind, she's actually a current superintendent um, for Fox Lake School District out here in Northern Illinois. Her name is Heather Frizzell. Uh, Heather was my principal when I was a teacher uh, with Kildare District 96. And she has since uh, you know moved into a variety of roles, but now being superintendent in Fox Lake, I also stay in touch with her. I just saw her um, recently at an event. Heather is incredibly dynamic and Heather, Heather believes that all of us have greatness in us. And she also shows uh, the, the staff that she works with and the students that she works with that we can all be anything. Um, we have the ability to you know, adjust to what we feel we can contribute to the world. Uh, she also believes that school is not just about content, and that's something I believe also. Um, there's a lot that that goes on within the walls of a school, and there are many, many social-emotional needs that need to be met and content that needs to be mastered, but there's more to everyone than just that. And she hmm. really, really projects that onto students, onto staff, and just in her own life as well, just in, in general with her own family. And I find her incredibly inspirational. She's the one that actually uh, really inspired me to go back uh, to pursue a doctoral degree, uh, to potentially become a superintendent one day. I, I knew I always wanted to be an administrator, but I never really thought much about going that far into administration. And she has shown me that it can be done and that you can make a, a great impact on a school district uh, by being who she is. So she's pretty, pretty great. Heather Frizzell, wonderful. Heather Frizzell. <laughs> No, oh, I love that. I love that. You know, so I, I'm going to give a little plug to my latest book, what makes a great principal, but it's not what it's not what I wrote, but it was something Allison, my co author wrote, and she said something and it you totally remind me of it. And it's really changed my language, which is sometimes why I love writing with someone else is because you know, it's pushes your learning. She said that we really have to think about talking about the idea of building capacity versus accessing capacity. And, mm -hmm. you know, talking about bringing out, like, it's not you're, you're getting these people to do something that they couldn't do. It's actually kind of bringing it out in them. And really, that was really, and seeing that greatness, you know, as, as you're talking to Heather doing that for you. So that, that really, that really stuck with me because I think reading that from Allison and hearing it from you has really kind of changed my language and the way that we, you know, share this because it's kind of like, well, hey, you weren't really anything until I showed up and built you this way. It kind of feels that a little way sometimes, as opposed to yeah. like, hey, this there's this greatness in you, and I'm here to help you, you know, kind of bring out the, the best in the work that you do that we know is is there. So I I love that story. And so let's go back. You know, I know you're the director of learning services, so this is going to be a really you know pointed question for you. Let's go back to your very first year of teaching, your very first year as an educator. If you can go back and tell yourself something, you know, give yourself a piece of advice, what would that be? Yes. Yeah, so that first year of teaching is also just so vivid for me and it was wonderful in, in most ways, but I was very, very hard on myself that first year. And so I would say a great piece of advice to my 21 year old self, fresh out of college, teaching hmm. fifth grade uh, in Cary. I believed that I had to be absolutely perfect at every single thing I did that year. Hmm. And while looking back, I think I, I really do believe I, I did a very, very good job. I built very strong relationships with students and families and focused greatly on, you know, the data and making sure my students were, you know, meeting learning targets and, and growth targets. Uh, but any little thing that didn't go well, whether that was my own perception or perhaps a parent phone call or a parent email, I took so personally that year. And 
I've really grown into somebody who can, you know, accept feedback and really use that as a teachable learning moment. But at 21, I was not great at that. And so I would definitely give that advice to, to brand new teachers that there are things that will come your way as a new teacher that you will never have anticipated that are not covered when you are in college at any point. Mm -hmm. uh, so many things that are required of, of teachers, especially now that just can't be taught in a classroom that you really need that field experience and that hands-on experience to, to really grow uh, as a professional. So I think I would really encourage my younger self and, and also anyone going into the profession now that you have to to give yourself some grace as you kind of grow and develop into, uh, you know, the educator that you absolutely have the capacity mm -hmm. to be, uh, and you just are, are learning. We're all learning along the way. I'm learning something every single day. So uh, that would be for sure. That's wonderful advice. I absolutely love it. Um, you know, okay. So I'm thinking this is, I, I, I try to always make an outside connection to some of the stuff that we talk about in education. And, um, I really, I've really been running, uh, it's something I, I really passionate about. I lift weights and I've been just getting injured over and over again over the last couple okay. of years. And it's so frustrating. And I think it was weird that you said this because today, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm rebuilding back and I, every time I kind of fall and, you know, like things are not going my way, I've started to really kind of embrace, Hey, this is a new opportunity to rebuild myself and to kind of learn, like, what am I going to take away from this to actually become better through that process, as opposed mm -hmm. to just solely focusing on, you know, the disappointment of that moment, right? It's like, okay, hey, this happened. How is it going to make me better? What am I going to do differently that will actually help me improve? And so it is like literally was thinking about this on my run today. So couldn't have been better advice because I think that that's not just great advice for teaching, but for living. And so I love it. So Jordan, I am so excited to um, join you all in Barrington. So I've heard such wonderful things about you and, and just, you know, obviously your stories and kind of your focus on bringing out you know, the best in the people that you serve and how much that impacted you as a student. So I cannot wait to join you. Uh, thanks for taking the time to be on the podcast. I know you're super busy and you're just like, you. yeah, so, you know, you may beat me. So, you know, I know, I know. I will always make time for you. This was uh, lovely. Right, right. Thanks so much. I, thanks everyone for listening. <laughs> Jordan, thank you so much for being on the podcast.